Welcome to Building My Legacy Podcast. This podcast is designed for leaders and entrepreneurs who want to leave a legacy and will provide strategies that focus upon key elements for legacy creation, determining your desired impact and its benefit, increasing your legacy's reach by engaging key stakeholders, planning, prioritizing, and executing. Here's your host, Dr. Lois Sonstegard. Welcome, everybody, to today's Building My Legacy podcast. I have with me today two very fascinating people. One is Lily Maldonado, and the other is Elude Medina. These two people have a company that's called Southern Industrial Career Center. And you can say, why do we have this on building a legacy? Well, those of you who are thinking of that next chapter in your life, and you're looking at Where do you make a contribution? Where can you have an impact and leave a real legacy with your life? Here's a concept and an idea that may be a brilliant one for you to start thinking about or trigger other ideas in your mind. So Lily and Elude have a welding center that they have created to help young people develop a career. And I'm gonna have them share the story about that but it's really about building careers and opportunities for people who um, have been disadvantaged or haven't had opportunities. And they have done this as Lily and um, has said, in a male dominated world, they have been able to be very successful as women. And so, um, Elude, you're not a woman, but you're part of this team. And I think you're one of the few, judging by the photos, that are right. part of this female-dominated um, effort to really enter a very um, male, macho discipline that we have tended to look at as being primarily strong men. So with that, I'm going to let you start by telling us your story. How did you get into this? How did you come to this? And um, what is it? What is it that you're wanting to do? Well, first of all, um, I never thought in a million years, you know, that I would have had a a vocational school actually up and running, you know, the way we have it with uh, federal and state grants uh, being funneled in through this school and trying to help the community. Right. But uh, I guess it all started uh, when I was 17, I would say, and, and it didn't happen until later on in life, right? But at 17, I went to a vocational school, just like the one we're running right now. And uh, I trained, you know, to become a welder. And after that, you know, I went in with companies and started working as a welder, uh, or at least I thought I was a welder, you know, at the beginning stages. But you know, you start getting the grasp of it and and getting experience. And from there, I went into more management type of positions, right, within the welding industry. Uh, One of the the good things about welding, the welding industry is it's so broad, you know, there's so many things that you can do. It can be anywhere from labor to education to business. It's it's just a wide, wide grasp that that it has, right? And uh, Luckily, we were able to to kind of funnel our knowledge into helping our community. Okay, so it, that's that's something that came about. It wasn't planned, but the way we we, uh, we started manipulating things into going, you know, and we ended up with an actual vocational school, right? So it's been quite a ride, you know, or my 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 personal journey through through this industry. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's been awesome as far as uh, an actual business. It's hard, just like any other business, right? There is a lot of things that have to be met. Uh, there is uh, all this criteria that we have to keep in check, keep our customers happy, keep our clients happy, and, and be successful you know, with, with the proper ethics in place. Okay. So Lily, how did you get involved? It's not yeah, so, a career for a woman. So how did you know? So uh, first of all, thank you for having us. Yes. So as you can tell, um, welding is not a very female dominated industry. I'm actually not a welder, but as you mentioned, our staff is mainly females. Um, I started off my uh, major when I graduated college. I just recently graduated with psychology. 
And I went in with the, the intent to, you know, go on and help people, especially where we come from in such a low socioeconomic economy, um, come from there and help them build themselves up. I never imagined to be working at a vocational welding school, but I'm glad I ended up there. I mean, I think that the staff there too, it's not um, what they imagine, but just our goal, which is to help the students, you know, not just get a career, but help them in the stages of to get there uh, is what really got me motivated into applying for this school. And I really enjoy it. So tell me a little bit about your students, the community that you serve. Who are these people that you um, educate? Okay, I, I think I can answer that one. Um, so we have an array of, of students, right? We have uh, one of our big population are kids that are graduating high school, okay? These kids that don't necessarily uh, want to go to college is one of the populations, okay? The other population is the, the, the high school graduate that does want to go to college, but, but wants to use the welding industry as a step towards their major in college, okay? And we also have the, the, older, the older, you know, group, let's say 25 and above, that they're wanting career changes to be able to make more money, okay? So we, we help all those groups out. Additionally, for about three years now, we've been working with a group of uh, federal inmates, okay, where they're, they have just come out of prison, and we actually help them, you know, reintegrate back into society through welding in this case, right? So that's actually been a very successful group as well. One of the good things about the welding industry is that for its most part, it doesn't discriminate against uh you know, having inmates working in the field or having even women. I mean, you would think women, it's more of an office jobs, but no, we, we have had plenty of women go through our welding courses. And to be sincere, they have done or performed a little bit better than men, actually, <laughs> as far as the welding is concerned. But yes, I mean, we, we are open to anybody. Uh, we've even had people with some disabilities and that they have been successful as well. OK, so, I mean, just because the scope of welding, again, it's so big, we are able to to maneuver students, you know, in this case, to go into different aspects of welding. So you're located in Texas. Correct. Do you, do you have reach outside of Texas? What are your plans? Oh, right now, right now, we just opened up our second location within our local community. OK, so we're within a 50 mile radius with two locations, right? But we do operate, uh, we do have uh, certifications that we give out uh, through a program that's called NCCER, which is a National Accrediting Association. And with it, within that, that branch of our company, we are able to reach, you know, throughout the United States. Okay. So how many students do you reach every year? In a typical non-COVID year, uh, we run through between... 350 to 400 students, okay? Uh, right now, because of, you know, high schools that are being, uh, that are not running in person and whatnot, we have been affected by it. And I would, I would say a number about 150 right now. Okay. So that's, a, so that's a fairly significant reach in your community. And how wonderful you're, you're reaching people that uh, many of us think are harder to serve and to really make some um, important inroads into their lives. So unbelievable. That's great what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. So for you, where do you see your future the next five years or so with your, with your school and what it is that you're trying to do? Well, Right now, for the for the near plans, um, we are working on being an all inclusive center. Okay, so where we have the actual vocational school, where we have our certification agencies working with us, where we have grants flowing in from state and federal monies, you know. And lately, we, I've actually been working on setting up a contractor company. Okay, that actually is going to employ. 
uh, our students all across the United States directly with us, you know? So uh, we are trying to make that one, one point, you know, that you can start, you can get your training, train, and then eventually start your career with us. Okay, so that, that would be the perfect scenario for me and we are actively working on it. Okay, so that's, hopefully we can get there pretty, pretty fast. So are you looking for people to collaborate with you on that or how are you going about doing that? Yes, actually. So we're a, uh, we're a contracting company as well, right? So we actually uh, employ people with, with through our company and then we send them out to job sites, right? So the way we would actually get more help was if we had more companies, you know, collaborate with us, right? So right now, for example, we would have uh, a need for about 100 employees as of right now. You know, so if we can grow that number even further, you know, it would, it would benefit our community, our students even more, you know. And once I can do that, you know, I would want to expand this to other parts of the state and maybe why not to part other parts of the country. So when you say you have a need for 100 now, um, those are requests that have come into you for peop- for work that is for employees that are needed to accomplish work. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. So there's a fairly large demand if you look at that just for your small area. Yeah, exactly. So I mean I mean the 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 scenes change a lot. For example, pipeline right now is it's it's an issue, right, with the with the new changes in president and whatnot. But one of the things about welding is that it's so diverse that whether we stay in pipelines or not, or we go into the solar and wind energy or, or whatnot, welding is always going to be needed. Okay. So it's, it's just of where the people are going to be employed, but the, 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 the need is always going to be there, right? Because no matter if we're building solar panels or if we're doing pipelines, oil rigs, or simply simple products, you know, that we use in our households, you know, about 60% of, of our everyday products are used some sort of welding in them, you know, so the need is very high, you know, and we do have a shortage uh, and we can create, you know, uh, the, 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 the skilled workforce. That is the beauty of it. Super. So tell me when you, for you, in terms of managing this company, what are your biggest challenges that you struggle with on a day-to-day basis? Okay, so lately we've come across a big issue um, where students are very comfortable in their zone right now. They are coming in with uh, to train because of government funds that are being produced, right? So the, the government is pumping money into these type of programs so that more people are being able to train. Yet at the same time, uh, they are in unemployment, okay? So... Once they finish the training, they're too comfortable to go out and work and stop receiving unemployment. And that is a challenge that we're having right now, right? That you came to work or to train at school, but you want to wait till your unemployment benefits are out, you know? So that's, that's a day-to-day challenge that we're having, you know, right now of people wanting to actually go work, you know? So... Yes, that's one of our, our biggest, you know, pet peeves, I guess you could call it, because the need is there, the training is there, the skill is there, but the want is not. <laughs> so part of what happens is that we have monies right now that are available. How long those will be available as they are, we don't know. But as long as they are, we don't the know. amount of money people get from unemployment exceeds what they would get from being employed. Is that correct? It doesn't exceed it, but l- let me give you an example, right? Let's say a typical a typical welder would make a thousand dollars a week, where unemployment is giving them seven hundred, eight hundred a week, you know, because with that extra extra stipends that they're getting or whatnot. So if I go work you know, theoretically, I'm only getting $200 profit, so might as well just stay home and join my family, right? Rather than going out to work, not see my family, and only for $200, 
you know Got it. so Got it. yeah so that that's the issue our our answer you know is that yes we understand that that might be an issue right now but unemployment is not forever you know it, it's a period and you're fresh out of training you're not going to go waste your time only for $200 you're actually going to you know reinforce your skills so that you're able to compete later on in the in the future with more skilled welders you know uh, but i guess it's a it's a it's a matter of perspective you know and that's the perspective that i have the ladies you know trying to reinforce uh, that's you know the the burden that that i guess i put on them you know make them see that this is not about the money this is about you becoming more valuable as a person and and you know getting the skill set reinforced at a job site that way you can become you know have have a a steady future okay which they don't have right now you know a lot of our students you know they are fresh out of high school they don't know what they want to do yet or they're already adults and they've been you know working in job odd jobs you could say you know some pay well but then six months out of the year they struggle and then they do good you know and welding is something that can be offered that can keep you steady throughout your lifetime you know yes you are going to change employers here and there but you know the pay is very very well you know the skill set as long as you have it it's it's going to be fairly you know sustainable as you go across your your life you know so that's what we can offer with with this this the, these programs but again it's a matter of perspective you know from the individual okay. Any other challenges that you face? That's a huge one. But other challenges that you face as well? Um, let's see. Well, I mean, for, for us, you know, as far as uh, the business itself, you know, there are day-to-day -day challenges. We are heavily regulated by state authorities, you know, so keeping everything in, in, in check, you know, that our students are being treated, you know, the way they should. Uh, having all the paperwork uh, that should be in place, our audits, you know, it, it, it really, for me personally, it's, it's a really big challenge, you know, because we have the human side aspect of the business, which is treat our people with ethics, treat them with respect, you know, do our best and even more, you know, for them so that they get the good training. And then at the same time, we have to, I have to juggle around with, with the, with the legal side of, of things, you know, so it's, it's 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 fun <laughs> to say the least <laughs> it's fun you know you have to be really really passionate about passionate about what you do you know to be able to to keep up so what brings you the greatest joy when you say it's fun what brings you the greatest joy with what it is that my you greatest joy believe it or not i mean it is that when a person finds a job or gets a job in the welding industry it just it's the best, it's the best thing because it means that we're doing something right. You know, it, it just, mean, you know, it just means that we're doing something right. And, and it just motivates us to keep on going and doing it more and more. So it's that sense of accomplishment for you. It's that purpose. Your purpose is really building and growing people and seeing them um, accomplish their goal. And what a beautiful thing that is. Yes. Lily, as a woman looking at what goes on, what do you see? Are they, how do the women respond and where do you see opportunities for women? Um, as a female in the industry and seeing what the students go through, you know, seeing them come in, the opportunities that are given to them, it's amazing um, as a community what they can accomplish to help the people in the community out. It's very, I mean, I've had students that come in out of, high school don't know anything they go we have several programs they go in through one program they pass that one they're excited uh, about you know their career they go through our other program you know they get their license while they're there and it's it's amazing it's amazing seeing what they're going to become and as females I mean we're very empathetic so just it's not only what's going on in the shop or what we're going to help them become after they graduate it's the problems that they have while they're in class, you know, especially right now with the pandemic, um, we had a lot of people that, you know, they were very discouraged to go because they lost family member. It was hard on them. They couldn't see family members that were in the hospital. So I think it really helped them having 
you know, the representatives there to have someone to talk to, even though it wasn't about, let's say, their career or what work it was. It was having someone there to kind of motivate them and show them the bigger picture of why they are there in school. And how Eliud said, it's really nice seeing these people um, coming from um, low socioeconomic backgrounds and then giving them an opportunity to get a job where they can help their family and their, you know, relatives get out of that um, community or that um, level where they're at. So if, as people listen to this podcast and they think, wow, I'd like to get involved and help with that. How, what are some ways that people could help you with what it is that you're building and creating? Okay. I think the biggest thing would be giving these people, the students opportunities. A lot of the uh, issues that the students have is that they don't even have, uh, they don't have enough experience or, um, Obviously, when you're looking for a job, you want an employer that is well-rounded and has the experience. A lot of these students out of high school, they take the certificate and they want to be giving those chances to prove that they are able to do it. So I feel like a lot of these employers, um, it would be nice if they can open their doors, either just to give these new students kind of like a, a rundown or just an insight of what it is that they do. Because a lot of the jobs that are in the welding, there are a lot of hands-on they have to be there they have to be active because like Elliot said it's not office work that they're going to be doing so giving them the opportunities and so they can build their confidence I feel like that's one of the most important things that employers can help us out in. Do you have an apprenticeship program so people could get started with a company for a period of time get their feet wet see if that's what they want? Um, so, so yes, actually, we do have programs that we work alongside with our local workforce boards, right? They are called the work-based training, which is uh, an opportunity that the student has that as they're going to school, they can also work part-time and they'll be getting paid at an actual job site, okay? So that's a really great opportunity for them. As they're going to school, they can start making money already and so that when they graduate, they not only went to school, but they also have something on the resume already, you know, for, for experience wise. Additionally, after they finish the work-based training program, they are also offered an on-the-job training program, right? The on-the-job training program is made to, you know, help the employer, you know, want to hire that individual that runs through our school. And the way they do that is by actually reimbursing part of the wages from that employee. Okay, so the the state actually helps you know the the employer by refunding a very large percent. You know, depending on on the time. For example, right now it's at a seventy five percent. Okay, so wow. yeah, yeah. So that is is set in place. These programs exist, and we want the employers to know this, right? That you know, there, there is help even for the employers so that the new employees can be, can get their feet wet, you know, in this industry. Okay. And that is exactly what Ms. Lily does in our company, you know, uh, try to distribute the word and put the word out there that yes, we want help, but there is also help for you along the way as an employer. Okay. So that, that is our biggest thing. So really it's a um, very low risk for an employer to try this and to partner with you in terms exactly. of getting uh, people to work. Exactly. So if people are interested, what would be some of the criteria? If a company is interested in having an apprenticeship program or having um, a student come and work alongside them in that work, um, student work um, program, what should they think about? What kind of um, processes should the company have in place to allow them to be successful as well as for the student to be successful? Well, we, we do have these programs with several companies already, right? And most of them are very successful. The way they are more successful is that understanding that the student that they're going to get or the employer, the employee that they're going to get from our school is a rookie, right? And with that set in, in, in mind, they don't hire them and put them automatically as a welder, 
but they set them into their company and they start training them to their company. So every company has different procedures set in place and, and different standards that they need to meet, you know? So asking for a welder, you know, especially a rookie welder and expecting them to perform like your, your, your older, you know, welders that you have there, it would be very, you know, not possible, but rather putting them through a program within your same company that works alongside our school, you know, we can help that employee become good for your company in specific. And, and that's part of what our school and our training does. You know, we can custom make it to your company and, and you also get the benefits of working, you know, with the government funding to help you pay while they're going through that, through that training within the company. Okay. So it's, it, like you said, it's really a low risk for an employer to, to, to hire one of our guys and, uh, and train them up, you know, train them up, uh, while they're going through the work-based training, the work-based training includes general liabilities uh, insurances so that the company is not responsible as well if a ha an accident were to happen, you know. So even that is, is taken care of, okay. So it's really, really low risk. It's just a matter of getting the word out there and uh, linking the employer with, with our new students, okay. Got it. So one of the things you talk about a bit is leadership. How do you lead in this environment where you lead by example, but leading when you have this very varied um, group of students, female in a male world, um, people who've come out of prison and are re trying to reestablish life, people coming from a, a neighborhood and a environment perhaps where work has not been the pattern um, in their social network. So how do you lead by example in that kind of a setting? Well, I think that most important it's ethics. It comes down to, to my personal ethics, right? Uh, for example, one thing that I have in, in embedded in me, you know, it's something as simple as being on time to everything that I, that I, that I do. Right. Uh, you know, for an employer, that's a valuable thing, you know, and even in, in the world of business, you know, um, sometimes I'll say things that <laughs> are not necessarily the best for the company, you know, but if I said it, I will keep my, my promise, you know, I'll keep, I'll, I'll have that as part of my ethics, you know, so I'll always do calculated, you know, risks, right. But every once in a while, you know, um, things get a little bit, you know, you say something that you will go a little bit overboard and that's fine, you know, uh. I don't do it always for the money, you know. There, there is a there is a human aspect to business, and I think that if you keep that human aspect alive, you know, it, it'll bring you down the road. It'll bring you more blessings than what you can give, you know. So, I mean, having that said, there is a lot of things that you know men are limited to in 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 in, in this industry, specifically welding education. Okay, um, I feel that the team of ladies that I have with me, you know, um, I have a better aspect of reaching out to the students than the one I can, you know? So pretty much all the ladies that I have here in, in, in the office that work with me, like Lily, Crystal, Maria, Angie, um, they all complete a part of, of what something that I cannot do, you know, and, and they're, they're part of the team for those reasons, you know? So, I'm very comfortable with reaching out to any one of them and asking for things that I know I cannot accomplish as good as they can. Okay, so. So what would some of those things be, Alou? So for example, we had, a, and I'll throw this one in there, you know, we had a student that was having a problem, you know, uh, he had issues of, uh, he just had come out of the penitentiary and he was feeling very scared, you know? My approach, you know, because I do come from uh, the world of welding and it's not the, the, the nicest per se, you know, the group of people that we hang out with, it's, it's more a rough, you know, uh, pattern, I guess. Uh, I don't think I have the, the skills to, to really calm a person down on my own and, and tell them, you know, this is going to get better or you know what, but in this case, Crystal, one of one, the uh, one of our school directors at our other campus, you know, really took her time, you know, really took her time and did it well, you know, 
And I was actually there to press and sit and I was very impressed, you know, how she was able to maneuver the situation from, from becoming aggressive down to a, a, a easygoing conversation and, and reigniting the, 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 the spark of why he was there, you know, and completing the course and eventually into the, into the field, you know, and I sincerely think that that's something I could have not done myself, you know, because I, I don't think I have that, that energy to do that, you know, when, 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 you know, somebody else can, you know, so. So I always think that that's the art of great leadership is knowing what you're good at and doing what you're good at and letting other people do what they're good at. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we think that we need to be everything, but humanly that's not really possible. Is it? No, (laughs) I don't think so. And uh, like, for example, here, Ms. Lily, you know, she is uh, a great spokesperson for the company. You know, she has represented us out there with Fortune 500 companies, you know, and, you know, sells our product, our students out to them, you know, and we, we maintain good relationships with them, you know. So that's a skill that she has that I don't think she knew she had, but she was forced into. <laughs> but when we have opportunities, we, many of us, are surprised when we discover what we, our talents are. And what you've done is you've given that environment where people can discover and then step up and really deliver. So that's remarkable. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else that you want to share with the audience before we conclude? Um, I would let them know that if they have anything in mind that they want to try to go ahead and try it. Because it's very true, especially in this industry, you never know what you have until you know you give it a try. Like I tell a lot of the a lot of the welders, especially the female welders, the majority of the time we don't realize what we're capable of. And if we stay in that what if, what could have, I should, we're never gonna know unless we actually do it. So for I mean, all those people that are looking uh, into joining the welding industry but don't know if it's for them. I would say go ahead and try it. We have a lot of opportunities in our campus as well for the students that are trying to come in. You know, they get free trials to see if it's something that they want because one of the most important things in our school as representatives is to practice what you preach, you know? We wouldn't want to put anybody in a situation where they're not going to succeed, whether it be um, putting them in that line of employment or having them join one of our courses, even if they're not really... That's not what they want, you know? So it is, um, try it. I would always say try it because you never know that that's for you unless you do it. Wonderful. On that note, we'll conclude this. Thank you so much, Lily and Elude, for being with us today. And for those of you who are listening, we will have information about uh, the company in our show notes. We will have information about how to be in contact with them if you would like to be in contact with um, either Lily or Elude and get to know more about what it is that they do or how you might be able to collaborate or partner with them. So thank you so much for being with us and sharing your story and um, creating another thought in terms of opportunities for building legacies for our leaders. Those of you... Those of you who are listening today, thank you for being with us. And remember to visit our website at buildtomorrow.com and all of our social media sites as well. Thanks much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. You've been listening to Building My Legacy podcast with Dr. Lois Sanstegard. To book your appointment with Dr. Sanstegard, visit www.buildtomorrow.com.